Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, A.J. Hogue, where A.J.'s more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's A.J. with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. Hi, I'm A.J. Hogue, the author of Effortless English, Learn to Speak English Like a Native, father of the effortless English system that trains you, that teaches you, that helps you. You speak English fluently. You speak English powerfully. You speak English confidently. You speak English effortlessly. You think in English. When you commit to my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com, EffortlessEnglishClub.com, go there, commit, don't quit, EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Learn English with stories. Learn English with stories. Another Aesop fable, another Aesop story today. And another idiom, another common idiom in English. Dead men tell no tales. Dead men tell no tales. I think, was that the, that might have been the subtitle of one of those Pirates of the Caribbean movies. I can't remember. But dead men tell no tales. Actually, you know, I'm quite amazed even I'm surprised at this book, Aesop's Fables. I'm, I'm really surprised how many idioms, you know, common, very, very common American, well, English idioms come from Aesop. I mean, I knew some did, but there are actually just a huge number of idioms that come from these stories. And this is another one, Dead Men Tell No Tales. Dead men tell no. You see this in movies sometimes. This phrase, "dead men tell no tales," it's a just a common idiom. We're live on Facebook today. Just want to say hi. I'm st uh, we're starting a little later than usual. Uh, I'm hoping uh, we figured out our baby schedule, and our babies kind of go crazy in the evening time. But we figured out around this time they usually start to get more quiet. This is a better time for me to do the show. So just, you know, hi to everybody who's joining as usual. Oh, lots of familiar names. Thanks for joining as usual. Tell you what, I'm just going to jump right into the story. And uh, we'll do the vocab, and then we can discuss as usual. All right, let me just read it first, then I'll go back. We'll do again with the vocab, and then again to explain the meaning. Dead Men Tell No Tales, that's the title. Tell no tales, tell no stories. A tale, T-A-L-E. So not like on an animal. This is different. A tale, T-A-L-E, is a story. So dead men tell no stories. All right. A fox and a monkey, as they journeyed together, disputed at great length about the nobility of their lineage. When they reached a certain place on the road, the monkey fixed his gaze upon it and uttered a groan. Oh. The fox asked what was wrong with him. The monkey pointed to some tombs that stood there. Don't you expect me to mourn, he said, when I behold the sepulchres of the slaves and free men of my ancestors. Lie away to your heart's content, answered the fox. They won't any of them rise up to contradict you. And then, of course, the moral, the message of the story at the end. It is the same with men who are imposters. They never boast more loudly than when there's no one to expose them. All right, a few difficult words in here. I'm going to actually change one of these words because uh, it's to something a little more common. All right, back to the beginning. Dead men tell no tales. A fox and a monkey, so they're traveling together. They journey together. Travel. To journey is to travel. Disputed at great length. Disputed here means argued. Argued. They argued at great length means for a long time. So they're arguing for a long time as they're walking. And what are they arguing about? They're arguing about the nobility of their lineage. Lineage is like your uh, ancestors, right? So it's all your family tree. 
the family that came before you, your family ancestors, that's your lineage. It's uh, the, the root of the word is, is, is the same as line, right? So it's your family line, your lineage. So they're arguing about who has the better family line, the better family ancestors, right? The nobility, meaning the, the goodness, the virtue of their family histories, their lineage. Then they come to a certain place on the road. The monkey fixed his gaze upon it. I mean, he stares at it. He looks at it. The monkey looks over somewhere and he, and he utters a groan. To utter is to say, to utter is to say, and a groan is like this noise. Uh, a groan is a noise you make when you feel pain. Uh, like your stomach hurts. Uh, that's a groan. So the monkey groans. He can be used as a verb too to groan. Oh, the monkey groans. Oh, he's looking at something. And the fox asks him, well, what's wrong? What's wrong with you? And the monkey points to some tombs nearby next to the road. A tomb is like uh, where dead people are buried. A tomb, T-O-M-B. You might know the movie Tomb Raider, and there's a video game. Tomb Raider, right? That means it's a, it's like a stone building usually and inside are dead people it's a way of burying people so a tomb so the monkey's pointing at the tomb and groaning oh and he says don't you expect me to mourn to mourn is to you know to cry to feel bad about somebody who's gone who's died he says when i behold when i see the sepulchers we'll just say the tombs when I see the tombs of the slaves and freedmen of my ancestors. So he's saying, he's pointing to these tombs where the dead people are. And he's saying, those are the tombs where my ancestors are buried. And they, some of them were slaves that became free. All right. So what's he doing? He's trying to show that, oh, look at my noble lineage. Look at my noble family history. You know, these all these people who died, who used to be slaves, and then they became free. They became free. That's so noble. It's so amazing. That's what, he's, that's what the monkey's trying to say. So he's trying to win the argument with the fox by pointing to the cemetery. But the fox is clever. He doesn't believe him. He says, lie away to your heart's content, meaning lie as much as you want. If you do something to your heart's content, that's another idiom, Eat to your heart's content means eat as much as you want. Lie to your heart's content means lie as much as you want. So he says, lie. He, the fox says, you're lying. They won't, any of them, rise up to contradict you. So he's saying, you're lying because all those dead people, they, they're not going to come alive and contradict you. They're not going to tell the truth. Contradict means to go against, to go against, to argue against. So dead men tell no tales. What the fox is saying, oh, you're telling this story about these dead people over there, but they, they're they dead, so they can't tell the truth. They can't confirm your story. So you can just lie as much as you want because the dead people are not going to talk. And then the, finally, the message of the story is the same with men who are imposters. An imposter is a pretender. Someone's pretending to be something that they're not. A liar, basically. An imposter is a liar. Those kind of men boast loudly when no one is there to expose them. So he's saying that liars, liars and pretenders, they lie the most when no one else is around who can contradict them. When no one else is around who can tell the truth. Then they feel like, ah, oh, now I can lie a lot. Right? So saying, this story is saying basically be, be, beware, be careful of uh, liars who are lying and no one else is around to check the truth, right? Dead men tell no tales, right? So liars will lie when no one else is around to tell the truth. And that's the message. That's the message of our story. Pretty simple. Let's review vocab really quickly, and then I'll go to the comments and questions as usual. Just a quick review of a few of the vocab words. So a tale is a story, T-A-L-E. 
The tale is a story. Uh, lineage. Your lineage. Your lineage is basically your family history, your family ancestors. It's the people in your family that came before you. Your lineage, your family line, lineage. To gaze is to stare. To gaze is to stare. G-A-Z-E. To gaze means to stare, to look, you know, really strongly at something. A groan. A groan is the sound you make when you feel some pain. Oh, uh, that's a groan. A uh, tomb is a place where dead people are buried. Usually it's made of stone. A tomb. Not always, though. It can be made of other things. To mourn, M-O-U-R-N. To mourn means to feel sad about someone who's died. To mourn, to mourn. To do something to your heart's content. To your heart's content. To do something to your heart's content means to do as much as you want. Contradict. Contradict means to go against. To go against. To contradict. To argue against. To contradict. An imposter. An imposter is a pretender or a liar. An imposter is a pretender. Pretending to be something they are not. And that is all. That is our vocabulary. Oh, it looks like the comments have frozen on my screen here. What's happening? Let's try them again. All right, we'll go to the comments and questions as soon as I can get it open. Hmm, where are the comments? Okay, guys, one second, and I'll get the comments back up here, and then we'll go. I might have to do this on Facebook, actually. Uh-huh. All right, guys, sorry, one second. It's taking a minute to get this set up. I'm not sure what's happening with the comments. There's a, I'm having some issues with comments. Huh. Oh, here we go. All right, we got some comments coming now. All right, here we go. They're back. All right, here we go. Back to the beginning. Sorry, guys. Something happened. My computer the, froze up for a second. So back to the beginning. So go back to comments and questions now. Hi, everybody. Welcome. So that's a pretty basic story. Dead men tell no tales. Sagbon says, tail is also part of an animal's body. Uh, no. That's a different spelling. The same pronunciation, tail, but if it's part of an animal, it's T-A-I-L, T-A-I-L, that's the tail of an animal, but T-A-L-E is a story. Lineage, yes. Michel has spelled it correctly, lineage. Thank you. I'll put that on the screen very quickly. Lie to your heart's content. Yep, good. You guys got it. All right. I think uh looks like we got it here, right? All right, Yin says, your teaching methods make it easier to learn English. Well, that's my job. <laughs> that's exactly what I'm trying to do, Yin. So thank you very much. I'm glad it's working. That's exactly what I'm trying to do. Uh, 
Imposter equals liar, Trin. Yes, not exactly. But um, an imposter is more like a pretender, pretending to be something. So, for example, maybe if I um, maybe if I bought a police uniform, a police uniform, and then I walked around a city pretending to be a policeman, but I'm not really a policeman. I'm an imposter. I'm an imposter. I'm right. I'm pretending. I'm fake. Pretending to be something I'm not. I'm an imposter, not a real policeman. So that's that's really what imposter means. It's it's a little different than liar. It's an imposter is not so much verbal. Like a liar tells lies, but an imposter pretends to be something that that they're not, some kind of person or something. Right? So the the monkey was an imposter. He was pretending to be noble, right? To be like from a great family. Motion says, girls hate the male gaze. Oh, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I think a lot of girls like it. Hey, Giuliano and Sardinia, good to see you. All right. How can I, uh, Mustafa, with the English question, how can I increase my vocabulary? Well, listening to these stories is one way. It's what I'm trying to do is help you increase vocab a little bit. Should I read books? Which books we recommend? Yes, you should read books. Reading books is the number one thing you can do. Definitely, 100% for improving vocabulary. Now, what I recommend is... Um, you know, which books, I can't tell you because it depends on what, you're, what you like. But choose books that are, seem fairly, fairly easy to you. Not super, super, super easy, but they're not too, not too difficult. And you should choose books about a, with a story or a topic that you like, that you really like. That you like, not that I like, that you like. And then read a lot of those books, as many as you can. Another great thing you can do is get the audiobook. So get a book and also get the audiobook, the same title. Because this will help you with pronunciation, right? Because now you can listen to the audiobook. You'll hear the correct pronunciation of the words. And then you'll improve your listening. And of course, you can read along. Sometimes you can only read, just read the book. Maybe you read the chapter, then you go back later and you listen to the chapter. And you can do this again and again and again. And it's a great way to improve vocabulary. Really good. All right. Liu, um, Liu Bomer says, we have to be careful with people who praise themselves. Yeah, right. That's kind of in the other uh, thing, right? They're both both the fox and the monkey are arguing and trying to make themselves sound great. And so people who do that all the time, people who are constantly saying that how great they are and I'm so great, I'm so great, my family's great. Yeah, then you have to start kind of it's that's actually good advice to be careful of people like that, because often they're exaggerating or just even lying or or they're an imposter. So that's a good point. Yes. Another uh, meaning of the story. It looks like uh, finally our comments are working a little better. Min says, does reading make listening comprehensive sl comprehension slow down? No, not at all. Either reading or listening to the book, but reading seems to be much easier to absorb its deep meaning. Absolutely, you're right. That's why I recommend read first, because this is the advantage of reading. This is the great thing about reading. This is why reading helps your vocab so much. You can go slowly. There's no time pressure. There's no pressure. You can go very slowly if you want to. So you can go slowly and fully understand the vocab, the sentences, the big meaning, everything. So that's why reading is great. That's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. Then... After you read and you understand everything well, then you go listen to the audio, the audio book. Now you work on listening. 
Listening's more difficult because of the time, the speed. There's pressure, right? It's going, and you, you can't slow it down very much. Um, so this is harder for your brain because now you've got to understand it quickly. So if you read first, you get the vocab, you get the sentences, you get the basic meaning going slowly, easier to understand. You can use a dictionary. Then you go and you focus on listening, listening, listening. After that, stop reading and focus on listening a lot. Then you'll get your listening speed better too. So you'll get the vocab first from reading, and then you get it with the listening and getting the proper pronunciation and the speed and all of that. So it's a good combination. That book, audio book combination is really nice. Thomas with the... Uh, I'm Reza from Australia, originally from Iran. Recently, I've started listening to your podcast from the very beginning, 2006. Wow. Started way back from the beginning. I'm not sure if it's better to just listen to them once or listen to some of them over and over and pass the rest. Which is better? Is there any selected list as your best podcast? I don't have a best podcast list. I don't, actually. So I would just choose the titles that look interesting to you. When you listen to one that's you like really like it, you really like the topic, you really like the message, uh, vocab, whatever. Then that one, repeat, repeat, repeat. So you can listen to like my new ones every day, and then you can just find your own favorites to repeat. So it's a, you can do a combination of both. It's probably, for the podcast, that's probably the best thing. Tomas, with another meaning of this idiom, which is excellent, dead men tell no tales. Those who survive write history. Right, exactly. Another way to say this is the winners write history. So any war... Any war in history, it's the winners who write the history usually. And so always the losers are the bad guys. Isn't that interesting how it's always the losers who are the evil ones, right? So in the American Civil War, the South, they always tried to make them sound evil. In World War II, it was Germany and Japan. They were totally evil. World War I, it was Italy and Germany were supposedly evil. And the other guys are the good guys. It's simplistic. It's, it's, it's because dead men tell no tales. And also the losers don't write the history. Good point. Also good meaning. You're right. Fan Lee says, you know, sometimes writers use idioms in writing. It's difficult to understand the meaning of words. We can only guess the content. Yeah, just do your best. Guess it. Guess it. You can look online. There's some idiom dictionaries online. So you can type the idiom into, you know, a search and you can often find the meaning that way. Merrick, for some reason I can't put this on screen, but I'll just read it. Merrick says, truth can be difficult, but its effects can be glorious. A lie can be nice but its consequences are very disastrous. And it is often the case that someone who lies does not believe other people. Yeah, usually. We in Poland say that the lie has short legs and sooner or later it will come out on top. So this is therefore not profitable. Yeah, that's nice. I like that. A lie has short legs. In other words, the truth will come out eventually. Eventually the truth will come. Carl Thurbaga says, I've been following you on YouTube for two years. Now I'm enjoying your live videos on Facebook. Thank you from Sudan. Sudan. Well, thank you. Very nice. We have people from everywhere. Tant Zin is asking, can I get your lessons in the Telegram application? Um, I have a Telegram. It's my name, I think, AJ Hogue. I'm not very active on Telegram. It's kind of a backup social media for me. Um, but I do have one. I, I, like I said, I think it's just my name, AJ, H-O-G-E. You can see I, can, I, I, I can't even really remember. Okay, uh, Wynn says, 
Hi, AJ. I'm from Myanmar. Myanmar. Do you know Myanmar? I know of it. Burma. I know where it is. I want to visit there. I lived in Thailand, so it's just right next to Thailand. I want to speak fluently like a native speaker, but there's a little problem. When I speak with foreigners, I forget how to speak English well. This is why I don't anymore. Yeah, it's, a, it's probably a nervousness thing, maybe. It could be an emotional thing. Watch some of my YouTube uh, channels or go on my blog that are there also. Um, I've got some about, you know, the psychological part of speaking fluently and getting over any nervousness. And, uh, you know, just just keep doing it, keep doing it. It's, it's kind of like public speaking, okay? Like when I first started doing public speaking, speaking on a stage. Well, I speak English, but somehow on the stage, speaking to people, a group, like I forgot how to speak my own language, right? Like uh, the, 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 uh, my thinking's not clear. My language would suddenly be bad. I was really nervous and all these problems. So I use some techniques to help overcome that. So again, look at my YouTube videos about public speaking. Um, and then also the thing is I just did it a lot. I started doing more and more and more public speaking. And eventually the nervousness got less and less and less. And then I was able to speak well. So probably you're the same that you probably actually can speak well with if if there's no pressure, right? If you're alone in your room, you can speak English. Ah, oh, I'm fine. And then you speak to a native speaker and uh, and suddenly all this pressure and you kind of forget to, how to speak. I understand. It just takes a lot of time. I had the same problem with Spanish, by the way. In uh, Spain, I was doing the Camino and, uh, you know, in some situations I could speak some days I would be speaking okay you know and if it was very relaxed very casual but I remember at least a couple times where I felt there was some pressure for me to speak and suddenly like I could not speak you know just like gone <laughs> so it's it's natural just uh it'll it will improve with time it will it will Ahmad asks are there any vocabulary we can gain through the subconscious? So subconscious learning of vocab. Um, yes and no. I would say that I, I'd say I, you can do it indirectly, I would say. Indirectly. This is where reading happens. This is where you're reading a story, you're reading a book, and it has new words. And you, you're reading and you're in the situation of the story. You're reading the story. You're enjoying it. And... Uh, you kind of come to a new word, but you're not sure about this new word. So, but you kind of understand the situation. So you kind of guess it. You just kind of guess the meaning and you keep reading. You don't use a dictionary. You don't try to read it. You just keep going. Maybe your guess is good. Maybe your guess is wrong. Who knows? But eventually you'll see that word again and then you'll guess again. It's a different situation. And little by little, as you find this word many times, from reading in these different situations, your guess will get better and better and better until finally you will indeed understand the word without really ever studying it. So that is what I would call, you know, you could call that subconscious or indirect vocab learning. It's one of the things that's powerful about reading. Um, but other people, you know, you're talking about like learning when you're sleeping, that kind of stuff. I don't think so. I just don't think it works. I think you, I don't think that kind of, you know, like the sleep learning stuff. I know some people say it might work, but in my experience, it doesn't work. So again, there's a question I get all the time from Dia. Which books do you recommend to enrich my vocabulary? So I can't tell you exact books because it really depends. You can start with children's books if you like, you know, like young adult books, those kind of things uh, for like teenagers. And, but you have to really choose the topics that you like. So if you like romance books, you can, you know, read romance. If you like crime, read that. If you write more like historical stories, find that. It doesn't matter. The main point is just to read a lot things that you enjoy, stories that you like, that you are interested in. That's the key thing.
We might have to be a little short today because for some reason the commenting on Facebook is like slow. I'm not getting the comments coming. They're just freezing. They're stopping. All right, let's see if I can find any more. Abu just says, thank you, sir. You have a clever way of teaching English. Keep up the hard work. Well, thank you very much. Hmm. Okay, I'll try a couple more minutes, and then um, we're going to have to go. Let me quickly review the, while I'm waiting for the comments to start working again, I'll review one last time the vocab. If the comments aren't working when I'm done, then we'll just be done for today and it'll be a short show and I'll, I just updated my software, unfortunately, and as usual with computers nowadays, usually an upgrade means a downgrade. I, I, I'm scared to upgrade any software now. I hate doing it because almost every time the upgrade, the so-called upgrade, which is supposed to improve things, almost always causes the program to break or causes problems. It's really quite annoying. It just shows how Silicon Valley is dying. It's too full of left-wing political crazies and there are not enough good engineers anymore. All right, so let's go back to the beginning. Dead men tell no tales. So a tale, T-A-L-E, is a story. To journey, to journey is to travel. Dispute, to dispute means to argue. Lineage, lineage is like your family history, your family line, your lineage. A groan, a groan, oh, is the sound you make when you're unhappy or sad, oh, or in pain. A tomb, like Tomb Raider, Tomb Raider. Uh, a tomb is where dead people are buried. It's usually like a more like a building. Like we have a grave, so a grave is in the, just like a hole in the dirt. But a tomb has walls and a roof. You know, it's a it's actual building that that dead people are inside of. A tomb, often it's made of stone. A tomb, tomb. T o m b. Okay, to do something to your heart's content, to lie to your heart's content, to eat to your heart's content means to do it as much as you want. Eat as much as you want. Eat to your heart's content. Lie as much as you want. Lie to your heart's content. To contradict means to argue against, to argue against. An imposter, an imposter is a pretender, a pretender. All right, that is all. And unfortunately, I don't know what's wrong with these comments today. I'm going to have to check on my um, software here and see what the problem is because there is obviously some problem, unfortunately. Okay, well, I guess that's all then for today, sadly. Sadly, sadly, that's all. But a short show. I hope you enjoyed it. We got some vocab today. Nice little story from Aesop's Fable, as usual. I'll be back. I am going to do a vocab lesson for um, the uh, interview, so don't worry. I didn't do it today, but uh, maybe tomorrow I'll do the first vocab lesson for that interview with Anthony about body weight muscle, body weight muscle. It was an interesting um, and a very good interview, I thought. I enjoyed Anthony and, and everything he said. So um, I'll go through. We may need a couple. Maybe I'll do a couple shows to discuss and learn some of the vocabulary that Anthony used in his interview. All right. Well, that's all. Fortunately, my comments are broken, so I can't do much more live. So we're just going to stop here. Hope you have a great day. As usual, commit to my VIP program. Commit to my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Commit, don't quit, at EffortlessEnglishClub.com.